We know that digestion involves both chemical digestion, which is the use of enzymes to cut, like molecular scissors, cut open these nutrients into small products, and mechanical digestion, which is the physical tearing apart of these macronutrients into micronutrients. Regardless, the aim is to get these big macronutrients, and those macronutrients are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. The aim is to get these macronutrients down into the smallest components, which are specifically proteins we want to get down into amino acids. Fats, we want to break down into two particular components, actually. We want to break them down into glycerol and fatty acids. And carbohydrates, we want to break down ultimately into glucose. Now the reason why, the reason why we want to break proteins down into amino acids, fats down into glycerol and fatty acids, and carbohydrates down into glucose, is because we want to use them in whatever way we think is best. We can't absorb proteins, fats and carbs from our small intestines into the bloodstream. We can only absorb them when they're in these micronutrient forms. Plus, the way I like to think about it is, when it comes to carbohydrates, we need glucose because glucose will ultimately be used to create ATP, which is the energy currency of the body, it allows us to survive. Fats, we like to break down into glycerol and fatty acids because they play a very important role when it comes to forming membranes and general structure of the body. Proteins, well, well, fats also can create ATP as well. Proteins, we want to break them into amino acids. I like to think of this as though a protein is a house and you don't like the way that that house is. You want to reuse the bricks that make the house to make a totally different house. So you break the proteins up into their amino acid constituents and you can take those amino acids and build whatever protein you want. Okay, and proteins, they play all the functional roles within the body. Now, the question is, how do we go from carbs to glucose, fats to glycerol and fatty acids, and proteins to amino acids? Well, today I want to talk about how this happens through chemical digestion. So this is using those molecular scissors to chop them up so we can get them down into their smaller units. Now, the molecular scissors are enzymes, and usually enzymes end in the suffix ASE, A's. So you're going to find that the enzyme that breaks down carbs to glucose is called amylase. The enzyme that breaks fats down is called lipase. And the enzyme that breaks proteins down is called protease. Now there's different subcategories of amylase, lipases and proteases, but we're just going to generally refer to them as amylase, lipase and protease. So, where does this occur in the body? So, if we start at the mouth where digestion does occur, so mouth, chew, 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 we've got the esophagus, which is through peristalsis pushing it down to the stomach, which then starts to jackknife in upon itself, release some enzymes, push it to the small intestines, and then to the large intestines, where we go to the sigmoidal colon, then the rectum, and then the anus for excretion. But when it comes to chemical digestion, let's start at the mouth. So, you take a big bite of a burger, and then as you chew, that's mechanical digestion, your salivary glands are going to release an enzyme called amylase. Therefore, the mouth is the first site of chemical digestion, and it's the first site of chemical digestion for carbohydrates. So mouth by releasing saliva. Now there's a little bit of lipase that's being released in this saliva, but we're going to say at the moment it's negligible. We just want to generally focus on where it's happening. Mouth, saliva, amylase. Then as we go down to the esophagus, there's no chemical digestion occurring at the esophagus. It's simply a conduit between the mouth and the stomach. Now as we get down into the stomach, 
the stomach starts to release some enzymes and these enzymes are proteases. So these enzymes are specific to break proteins to amino acids and the enzyme is called pepsin. So the stomach is actually the first site of protein digestion. Now remember that pepsin isn't actually released as pepsin, it's released as pepsinogen by these particular cells called chief cells. There's a number of different cell types within our gastric pits. Now, these chief cells release pepsinogen, and if it ends in O-G-E-N, it means it's stored and inactive. Something needs to activate it. Now, the thing that activates pepsinogen is hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is released from another cell within the gastric pits of the stomach called parietal cells. So, chief cells release pepsinogen, parietal cells release hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid travels to the pepsinogen and chops it, and activates it into pepsin. And what does pepsin do? Well, pepsin breaks some of these chemical bonds of proteins. It's a protease. Now, from the stomach, we move to the small intestines. Now, the small intestines is the first site of fat digestion, and it's because of the pancreas. The pancreas actually releases all three types of enzymes. So what we can do is we can move through, and we can say that the pancreas even though it's not the site of digestion, the pancreas will release proteases into the small intestines. The pancreas will release lipases into the small intestines, and the pancreas will release amylase into the small intestines. This is important because it tells you that by the time we get to the small intestines, nearly everything is chemically digested, digested except fats. And this is very important because as the fats move through, it's heavily reliant upon the pancreas. So if somebody has pancreatitis or some issue with their pancreas, then what you'll find is potentially those fats won't be digested and you can get a fatty stool. So that fat gets pushed all the way through. Now, here are the major sites. There's also some cells within the small intestines called brush border cells, and they release some proteases and some amylases as well, but not lipases. You can see how important the pancreas is for fats to be digested. Now these lipases aren't gonna be that successful unless the gallbladder squirts down a little bit of bile as well. If you want to know more about bile and the gallbladder and the liver, watch that particular video. But this is just a very brief summary overview of chemical digestion in the gastrointestinal tract.